everyone and welcome to Science Lab. The signs are happening because Lord Jesus Christ is coming. And every day we are looking at some of the great signs that are happening around us. Today we are going to look at some of the end time signs happening in Europe. France Historic and Modern Church State Corporation. The strength link between church and state is slowly being restored in France. Secularism is a prized constitutional principle in France. French President Emmanuel Macron characterized it this way at a news reception in January 2018 before a crowd that included senior members of the clergy. This French secularism, which sometimes surprises our neighbors, is powerful cement in a country torn by so many wars of religion. But coming to France in the near future is a reduction of secularism and expansion of religion and more war. The stubble at the moment signs of this change are already emerging. As the coronavirus crisis unfolded earlier this year 2020, Macron invited religious representatives to share their thoughts. The president of the Conference of Bishops of France, Bishop of Reims Major Eric D. Moulins Beaufort responded with a 60-page letter to the president on the 3rd of June 2020, stating that church and state should work closely together in the interest of the common good. Moulins Beaufort leads bishops that represent millions of French Catholics. France's church-state relationship has historically been marked by ups and downs, power struggles, wars and the French Revolution. Macron knows this history well, yet even he pleaded for the restoration of this strained link between church and state at France's annual bishops' conference in April 2018. With Moulin's Beaufort's letter, both the church and state leaders in France are now vowing to restore this cooperation. In August 2019, Macron received Moulin Beaufort for a 90-minute long courtesy visit, as La Creox reported at the time. The subject of the meeting revolved around the reconstruction of Notre Dame, reception of migrants, relations between cults and the state, and revisions of bioethics laws. Macron is working closely with the Roman Catholic Church and seeks its input regularly on all these issues. These are small steps thus far, but it would appear Macron wants to revive this church-state relationship in France. Yet this relationship has a long history. Roman Catholicism became France's state religion during the reign of King Clovis. Cooperation between the French monarchy and the Catholic Church peaked under Charlemagne when the Pope crowned him Emperor. Macron honored this history when he signed a new Franco-German Treaty of Friendship with German Chancellor Angela Merkel on January 22, 2019 in Ayakhen, the city from which Charlie Mang reigned and which he is buried. What Charlie Mang established had a lasting impact on France. The church not only guided the religion of the French, but also became the nation's largest landowner, the overseer of hospitals, the guide of its educational system, and the approver or denouncer of scientific research. France, nobility and clergy worked to secure one another's power, reputation and wealth. The effects of this cooperation were also felt beyond Europe. Baldwin I established himself as the first king of the Crusader state of Jerusalem. In 111, Baldwin succeeded his brother Godfrey, who was appointed the first king of Jerusalem. The church of St. Anne was built during the time of these crusades. On the 22nd of January 2020, Macron visited Jerusalem to hold political talks and attend the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. During his trip, he visited the Church of St. Annie in Jerusalem's Muslim quarter 
in the old city, Macron begins Jerusalem visit by underscoring France's history in region was the Jerusalem Post headline at the time. The church building was given to France by the Ottoman Empire in 1856. France claims the church as one of four sites it owns in Jerusalem. St. Anne is called a crusader church. Of all Macron's political goals in the region, he deemed underscoring this history most important. So much so that he furiously took a controversial stance to defend France's claims. Macron shouted at an Israeli security officer, Everybody knows the rules. I don't like what you did in front of me. Go out, outside please. He emphasized that the rules have been in place for centuries and they will not change with me. Macron specifically planned this visit and was likely prepared for a possible confrontation with security personnel. He was deliberately resurrecting France's history of cooperating with the Catholic Church in the Middle East. Rather than memorializing the deaths of millions of Jews, he honored those who persecuted and killed Jews anciently, the Crusaders. We have seen about the end time signs happening in Europe and after seeing all these things, we definitely need a break. Don't go anywhere, we'll meet you after a short break. Welcome back to Science Lab. Signs are happening because Lord Jesus Christ is coming. We were seeing about the end time signs happening in Europe and let's continue. France Church State Corporation reached its peak of brutality during the Protestant Reformation. As Protestantism swept through Europe, heretics were brutally tortured until they denied their faith or lost their lives. But the reformers grew stronger and formed military alliances to fight back. The religious conflict culminated in the Thirty Years' War, 1618 to 1648. French King Louis XIV resumed the religious wars in 1685. French Bishops' Conference, Major Eric de Molines before represented the Catholic Church at the meeting. Macron had previously received Molins Beaufort for a one and a half hour courtesy visit in August 2019. One of the talking points between the two was the relations between cults and the state. The Catholic representative is reportedly very pleased with how Macron is following up on the discussion. Moulins Beaufort said, I believe that the President's wish was clearly to thank the investment of cults in the face of COVID-19. Emmanuel Macron wanted to know what our state of mind was. He wanted to hear from us about the plight of French people facing death and mourning. He knows that the families are deprived of funerals and that this is very hard. We can no longer comfort ourselves, hug each other. We insisted on the fact that we should organize dignified ceremonies after the fact. Francois Claveroli, president of the Protestant Federation of France, explained why these meetings are of such great importance to the French president. For Emmanuel Macron, religious denominations bring social cohesion. Faced with this global health crisis, he is determined to call upon all resources, including spiritual resources. Macron seeks to use religion to unite his divided country. About an hour prior to his meeting with the various religious representatives, Macron had a telephonic conversation with Pope Francis. According to the President's office, the two men stressed their convergence of views concerning the universal truths, debt cancellation, international solidarity and Europe. During the call, Macron also explained France's strategy in the crisis and renewed his invitation for Pope Francis to visit France. Church and state in France are required by law to be separate, but Macron believes they need to work together. At the College des Bernardins, on April 9, 2018, Macron delivered a hard-long speech to French Catholic bishops and more than 400 Catholic leaders. 
in his opening remarks he said we doubtless share the same vague feeling that the link between the church and the state has been damaged and we both believe it is important to repair it he told the bishops indeed it is because i refuse to be indifferent that i am aware to what extent the history that the state and the church have shared for so long is now peppered with misunderstandings and reciprocal mistrust but today in this period of great social fragility when even the fabric of the nation is at risk of falling apart i believe it is my responsibility not to let catholics trust for politics and politicians erode away during the periods that the holy roman empire was on the scene church and state worked closely together and until the protestant reformation the catholic church was the undisputed most powerful religious authority in europe France has a long history of cooperation with the Roman Catholic Church. During times of crisis, the French have been united in belief and hope through the cohesive factor of religion, striving for the same goals, attending the same services, hearing the same messages, and being inspired by the same music, the same culture. The country's unity has suffered through infighting within the Catholic Church. and during following the protestant reformation the catholic church supreme goal has always been to unite europe under one government and one religion that is exactly what the holy roman empire is but throughout history this goal has only been achieved with much bloodshed Charlie Mann, the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, is the leader Europe often looks to with admiration. Former German president Roman Herzog said in 1997 during his acceptance speech for the Charlie Mann Prize, "For thousand years, the destiny of a continent has revolved around the choice between a cohesive or a fragmented Europe." Charlie Mann, after whom our prize is named, made his own particular choice. the first unification of europe at such an hour the trust must be told only by wading through a sea of blood sweat and tears did he reach his goal indeed the history of european unification has been one of much blood the germany has been europe's greatest perpetrator in instigating that bloodshed roman herzog has long been one of germany's biggest promoters for european unification He and many other European leaders frequently harken back to Charlie Mann as the inspiration behind modern-day unification. Mr. Macron also seeks to unite Europeans by means of religion. While Macron is seeking closer alliance with Germany, he is also allying with Europe's oldest institution, the Roman Catholic Church. Macron is thus leading France into a dangerous church-state union that has plagued the continent for centuries, the Holy Roman Empire. This empire has brought unity to Europe, but it has always come with a price. In the name of religion, millions have fought and died on the European continent. For rejecting Catholicism, many have been tortured and killed by the state, but at the behest of the church. Bible prophesies that 10 kings will rise in Europe today. Revelation 17 verse 12 and 13. This prophecy was written nearly 2000 years ago and these 10 kings are rising in Europe today. All these shows that what is mentioned in the Bible that are going to take place in the end times are taking place in our lifetime. We are living in the last days, but Jesus Christ is coming again very soon. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to tune into Science Lab next time. And before we end the show we would like to ask you a question. How many sites to France claims to own in Jerusalem? Option A 4, option B 3 and option C 2. Send us your correct answer to our email address sciencelab@angeltv.org. If you have missed any of these episodes, don't worry. You can watch it again and again in our Science Lab YouTube page. But don't forget to like, share and comment on the video. 
but also ask your friends and relatives to watch the science lab so that they will know that we are living in the last days. Remember, signs are happening because Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Maranatha.